So in China, a couple years ago, there's this old woman that started running 20 kilometers every day. And not just that, she even did hard exercises like curl-ups, push-ups. She also adopted a calorie-restricting diet, eating only fresh fruit and vegetables to lose weight. Isn't it strange? What inspired her to do so? Was she trying to look good again? Was she trying to reclaim her youth? Was she preparing for a special event? Or someone special? Well, Mrs. Wang was told by her doctor that her son Ding Wei was at the end stage of uremia. Uh, it was a uh, fatal kidney disease and that a transplant was needed. Now, for the operation to be successful, the donor needs to be somewhat similar weight as the patient. Knowing that her son's time was running out, Mrs. Wang put on running shoes and started running 20 kilometers every day for half a year. And she was able to lose 44 pounds and made the donation save her son's life. In an interview, Mrs. Wang said, she never feared death, never feared disease, never thought of losing her weight, seriously. And no man in this world could make her give in, except for her son. There was nothing more frightful than losing my beloved son. This is true altruism, and this is what I call unconditional love. What is unconditional love? Well, many research have shown that an infant lacking unconditional love runs the risk of developing psychological and cognitive dysfunctions or even dies. Us humans, we need unconditional love for uh, our own physical and emotional health as well as spiritual well-being. Now, unconditional love literally translates into the kind of love that demands no conditions, right? It is basically loving a person without questioning whether you feel any other way towards that person. Sounds easy, right? Yeah? What if I tell you it is far easier and more natural to love conditionally and to bring disaster into relationships, any kinds of relationships. For example, a man and a woman fall in love with each other. They, uh, they get engaged because the man sees in the woman as someone that can provide him with physical and emotional needs. Now the woman sees in the man as someone that can provide her with protection, financial stability, or some secret sauce. <laughs> but you see, each person is looking after his or her own needs. Conditional love begins when we see the other person, our partner, as a source for our own gratifications. And this is completely natural to us, whether we admit it or not, because we were born that way. Ever since we were young, we received warmth, protection, and tender loving kindness from our parents or our caretakers. And then we carry that same mentality of sugar, spice, and everything nice far into our adulthood. We've also been taught by life to be sensible, defensive, and vigilant. You know, always scanning for dangers, threats, security, <laughs> and keeping things in control. Now, unfortunately, thanks to all that, <laughs> we're still children when it comes to love. We tend to demand too much from our, from our partner without us actually giving. We tend to be selfish to our partner. We see our partner um, with 
disenchantment and let down because he or she just doesn't seem to uh, understand our emotions and our uh, feelings properly. We become hurt when our needs are not met. We're upset just because our partner just doesn't seem to fit that, that, that picture, that picture of the lover that we've been imagining. So then it becomes our natural instinct to just be unkind to our partner. It, it's much easier for us to just curl up into this ball of insecurity and neediness. We then, we then overthink, we fight, we bite, we argue, and then we out. Without even asking, why did we begin this entire relationship? Why? Well, the truth is, we're all hurt. Not because of our partner, but because we simply have to grow up. Now, before I go deeper into uh, unconditional love, let's rethink about love. What is love? Hmm. Even Google knows, knows what love is. Love is an intense affection for another human being. Love is also a uh, nature's secret method of tricking us humans into reproducing. Love is the act of giving and caring for the other person knowing that his or her well-being and happiness is of your priority. Love is the ability to hand over to someone a gun, a fully loaded gun, aimed straight at your heart, and trusting them to not pull the trigger. Unconditional love has all these characteristics, but without conditions. Now, parental love, think about my point earlier, is a good example of unconditional love. When we were little, our parents looked after us in every way. They made us feel safe, they nurtured us, and even indulged us. And you know what the good thing was? We didn't have to reciprocate. We, they didn't need us to ask about their day, they didn't need us to look after them, they didn't need us to know all of their problems and how to solve them. Our responsibility was painfully simple. We just had to exist. And then every little things we did, from crawling on the ground or grabbing a teddy bear with our tiny little hands, just fill our parents' heart with happiness. They did us quite the honor of not showing us what kind of pain, labor, and burden that looking after us had imposed on them. They maintained a calm and cheerful facade while keeping that, that argument up in the bedroom a secret to all of us. We were loved, and we didn't have to love. It wasn't, it wasn't a long time ago that I uh, realized what kind of troubles my single mother had to go through. She struggled with debts, still struggling now, struggled with immense stress from work, struggling with her own physical illnesses, and then the pain of loneliness to which she still carefully conceals today. Yet she sacrificed everything for my well-being <laughs> so I can be here today and so I can have a better future. My mother loves me unconditionally. This is not a job. This is not an obligation. It's a choice. So now that we kind of get the idea of unconditional love, how can we apply that to our... Uh, a partner, our spouse. Well, number one, you have to be willing to put the health of the relationship above everything else. You should also, you must leave an abusive relationship regardless. And when it comes to love, Alexander the Great once asked Socrates, hey, what's the difference between like and love? Socrates' answer was, hey, if you like a flower, you just pluck it. If you love a flower, you water it every day. 
The same thing goes for unconditional love. You never withhold love just to get what you want or what you need. You will want the best for the person. You will respect the person for who he or she really is. You will teach as well as learn from the person. You will give the person without expecting anything in return. And you will trust the person enough to let him or her just venture into the outside world and believing that they'll come back to you. They'll come back to you. Now please remember that you will not always be happy all the time or having your expectations met because nobody is perfect. The sooner you realize this, the better. When you first start showing unconditional love, okay, you probably expect your partner to be somewhat grateful or at least happy to receive it, right? That's not always the case. See, some people have been treated with hostility. They've been used to being treated with hostility or just never experienced this kind of love before. Therefore, they don't know how to respond to it. And that's okay. You also don't want to try to change the person. Don't change the person. But instead, learn to just respect and love, embrace those differences. Learn to compromise, not because you're weak, but because you're strong enough to just make a change for the better, to just love the person, to build a strong relationship, and to make it work. Have an open communication with your partner, but also learn to calmly express any hurts and concerns just because you care about your partner's feelings and you're kind. Forgive and forget any mistakes and flaws, but learn from them. Let go of any small and trifle things that may bother or annoy you. And instead, focus on the good qualities that your partner has. And always appreciate love, okay? Love is never to be taken for granted. We take love for granted without knowing it. You know, the next morning you wake up and you still have your partner there, you guys are still alive, still in love, should be happy and grateful for it. You should feel lucky about it. So how do we appreciate love? Small acts of kindness. Or just loving words like, thank you. How can I make your day better, honey? And then this is important. Be vulnerable. Because transparency, authenticity, and humility helps build a meaningful connection between the two of you. We don't rise into love, right? We fall in love. Take that fall. Surrender. Give yourself up. Oh, but that's quite mad. Shut up. Your partner never loved you at first. Now, he or she might have a really strong uh, affections for you, strong feelings for you. Your partner loves you because every day before you roll out of bed or check your phone, check your email, you always turn to him or her and just say, good morning, sweetheart. Did you sleep well? Your partner loves you because every time you walk down that coffee shop down the road, you always grab her a medium latte. Not because she asked for it, but because you care. Your partner loves you because every time he or she is having a bad day, you just, you just offer to, to sit there, to sit there and, and listen and shh. Because you know that sadness and pain is part of life, and it is important that you help your partner feel it through. See, unconditional love requires kindness, generosity, and patience. What about ourselves? Shouldn't our well-being be as equally important too? Yes. When you're on an airplane, right? and then the air pressure plummets, the oxygen mass drop, what do you do? You have to put the mask on yourself before you help others. 
The same thing goes with unconditional love. You have to love yourself unconditionally first before you give that love to another person. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean that we should take the necessary step to grow. We should take care of our own physical and emotional health. We should make an effort to improve our self-awareness and self-esteem. We should also learn to forgive others and ourselves. We should be kind to ourselves, but also have a certain degree of kindness to just everyone. Not because they are necessarily kind to us, but because we are. If we, if we want something so badly out there in life, then encourage ourselves to just go get it. But have responsibility. And don't pay too much attention about what any other people say about us. Because in the end, it is actually just our own opinions on us that either make or break our destiny. You shouldn't love anyone believing that him or her will fill in the gap or will make you complete, right? Uncon true unconditional love starts from you to you. Self-love has to be a given. Now, before we walk out of this, this room tonight, I want us to understand that true love or unconditional love is not about what you get, it's about what you can give. Before I close my speech, I'd like to acknowledge my girlfriend, Chum. Uh, she's actually not here right now, she's 9,000 miles away. She's been an inspiration for me to write this beautiful speech, as well as become a better person that I am today. Be willing to love unconditionally. Thank you for your time.